Have you ever wondered where this flag came from? And what are all the stripy crossy things representing? Have you ever seen any of these flags and wondered who got fired because they clearly forgot something? Well, welcome to Chit Chat History, where I'm going to explain a little of the history behind where this flag came from. The Union Jack has been through quite a lot in the past 400 years. The Union flag is meant to do just that, unify several nations together under one flag. The United Kingdom is a union of four nations, England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, each of which, well except Wales, is represented in the flag. The Union Jack was first created in 1606. Before that, these countries all had separate flags to represent themselves. This is the English flag, also known as St George's Cross, and this is the Scottish flag, also known as St Andrew's Cross. Now these were still in common use today to represent these two countries, but one that is less widely known is the flag chosen to represent Ireland, also known as the Cross of St Patrick. So all three of these countries are represented by their patron saints and their respective crosses. Now let's talk about Wales. Why don't we get a dragon in the middle of the Union Jack? Although that would be pretty epic, there's a specific reason why Wales does not appear. This is due to the fact that the Union Jack was created in 1606, when Wales was considered to be annexed by England at the time. The Cross of St George, therefore, was meant to represent the Kingdom of England and Wales in one. Of course, Wales is considered its own country and should be given its rightful place in the Union Jack. Now, Wales also has its own patron saint, St David, who does have his own flag too, although it has only become more popular in the last century. And if not the Welsh flag with the dragon inside, we could also use St David's cross to represent Wales. So the year is 1603. Queen Elizabeth I has just died, leaving her only successor, James VI of Scotland. This led to what was called the Union of the Crowns, James took over as monarch of both Scotland and England, although the two remained separate states until 1707 under the Acts of Union. In 1606, the two countries fused their flags together, the flag of St George and the flag of St Andrew. The Union flag actually looked a little different in Scotland and England. In England, the flag looked like this, and in Scotland, the flag looked like this. And this was a way of demonstrating Scotland's white flag came before that of the English Red Cross and became their unofficial Union flag. This was referred to as the Scots Union flag and it came out of fashion in around 1707 when the English version became a bit more widely known. Now this early Union Jack was typically used overseas on military and civilian ships. But each kingdom continued to use their own respective flags on land. In 1707, after the official act of union between the two kingdoms, this became more commonly known as the flag as what is now uh, representing Great Britain and more widely used upon land and sea. In 1801, we see another act of union between that of Ireland and the kingdom of Great Britain. Great Britain was made up of England, Wales and Scotland Basically, the countries that made up the larger island, and Ireland made up the smaller island. With the new act came once again a new flag, this time adding the diagonal red cross of St Patrick to represent Ireland. It wasn't exactly used popularly as a representative of Ireland, but it was an established Irish symbol. Ironically, this flag was said to be created in 1783 by King George III, to mark the independence of Ireland, and then in 1801 used to represent them in a false unification under Britain's thumb once more. And again, this flag isn't widely used to represent Ireland, so Ireland didn't really see themselves as being represented in the new Union Jack, and saw this as another example of British subjection. This new addition to the flag also created a new requirement for a right side up and a wrong side up. The symmetry created clockwise around the flag meant that the white section should always follow the red clockwise. Irish independence came in 1921 
but since Northern Ireland remained in the Union, that was considered good enough to keep the St. Patrick's flag in place on the flag. And the St. Patrick's flag became unofficial to represent Northern Ireland alone. A possible Scottish independence in 2014 led to more discussions about the possibility of removing the blue St. Andrew's cross, but this never came to be. The Union Jack has no official status in the UK, and therefore has very little restrictions or regulations concerning its treatment, as there are in countries like America for their flag. It has become the national flag just by common use and association. This flag doesn't accurately represent everyone in the United Kingdom, not even the four countries are part of its union. It is also questioned morally because of the association with Britain's colonial legacy. There are many upon many debates about how we can rework the flag to be more inclusive and representative, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. The Union Jack as we know it is featured on numerous other flags, typically of previous or current colonies of the United Kingdom, as well as many ensigns, which is another type of identifying flag. So it will also be interesting to see if these flags will all have to adapt to a new design too. Is it the Union flag or is it the Union Jack? The term Union, as we discussed, came from around 1606 to describe this flag and what it's meant to represent. The term Jack, specifically, is only regularly applied to this flag in particular. Jack was used to describe small flags on the mast of a ship. Now, as we discussed, the Union flag was predominantly only used in the earliest of years in the 17th century on ships, either civilian or maritime. But this is likely where the connection was created. The flag was often called by the crew Jack's flag, King's Jack, or more formally as His Majesty's Jack. Later in the 18th centuries, the front mast disappeared, and the small flag or jack became replaced with the ensign, a different type of flag to distinguish who the ship belonged to. Now these ensigns would often have the Union Jack in one of their corners, so the Union Jack, therefore, was no longer needed to be displayed. Some think that we should only call this the Union Jack if flown on sea. Now, this is a myth. I think simply because it came from the fact that the term Jack was from the maritime context. In fact, people must have been confusing the two so often that in 1902, the Admiralty announced that either name could officially be used, something approved by the Parliament in 1908. Therefore, don't worry about getting it wrong. The Union flag can also be referred to as the Union Jack. And honestly, I just think it sounds cooler. Thanks for joining me once again to chat a little bit about my favourite subjects and quick history lessons. If you liked this video, please give it a like below, and if you didn't, keep that to yourself. Goodbye for now.